In this video, I wanna run through a whole bunch of different examples about determining if equations are linear or nonlinear. And remember, if equations are linear, then they follow these rules that I've written out here on the screen. So the first one is that all variables are raised only to the first power. So it's not to x to the negative one or x to the zero or any other power except one. Secondly, no variables are multiplied together. So you don't have something like x times y, right? Variables are not involved in any trigonometric, exponential, or logarithmic functions. So you don't have something like sine of x or ln of x, right? Variables are not in the denominator in any term. So you don't have something like four over x. And finally, there are no roots of variables. So you don't have something like x to the one half power or square root of x, right? So let's just start running through examples and talking about whether these equations are linear and nonlinear, and hopefully that will give you a better understanding of how to determine if equations are linear or nonlinear, right? So let's start off with our first example. I'll just do number one here. The first one is 2x minus y is equal to three, right? This equation, I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, is linear. And that's because all variables are raised only to the first power, right? We have x, x to the one, and y to the one. None of the variables are multiplied together. So x, you don't see something like x times y, right? This is not there. Um, none of the variables are involved in any trigonometric functions, exponential functions, or logarithmic functions. And finally, no variables are in the denominator, right? So this, I'm gonna say is linear. Great, now let's go on to example two. And just FYI, we're gonna do about 10 of these. So the second example is x plus y squared is equal to negative one. Now, this equation, we have x here, and then we have y raised to a power other than one. It's raised to the second power. So this is gonna be nonlinear. In our third example, which I'll do right here, we have the equation 2x minus 5xy is equal to zero. Now here our variables are x and y, but in our second term here, 5xy, we have two variables that are multiplied with one another. We have x times y, so this makes this equation nonlinear, right? So let's go on to example four. We have sine of three pi over two times x plus y is equal to negative two. Now, we do have a sine function here, but the value within the parentheses of sine is just a number, it's just a constant number, three pi over two. So sine of three pi over two is just some number, right? So that number is multiplied times a variable x. Since it's just a coefficient times x plus y, this is actually a linear equation. Now, if we had this x term, if it was within the parentheses, so let's say we had something like this, I'll just do this in blue, sine of three pi over two x plus y is equal to negative two, this would be nonlinear because x is now involved within the trigonometric function sine, right? It's sine of some number times x. It's not sine of some number, parentheses, times x. So this, this blue equation here would be nonlinear, but this green equation would be linear, right? I'm gonna scroll down a bit so we have some more room. And I will, let's change colors to make things exciting, right? Five. Example five, we have e to the negative three times y plus five x is equal to negative eight. This equation is, can you guess? It's linear. So this equation is linear, right? So e to the negative three is just some number and it's multiplied by y. And remember, it's okay if variables have a coefficient. In fact, all variables have a coefficient, right? So if we had something like x plus y is equal to one, well, technically the coefficient for x and y are both one, right? So this term right here, although we have 
this constant e to the raised to the negative third power is just some number multiplied by y. It's not involved in any trigonometric functions, logarithmic functions, exponential functions. It's not one over y, um, and it's not multiplied with another variable. And the same thing goes with x. It's just some coefficient, five, times the variable x. x is only raised to the first power. It's not multiplied with any other variable. It's not involved in any trigonometric, exponential, or logarithmic functions. And it's not in the denominator, right? It's also not a root of something. So it's not square root of x, right? So this, example five, would be linear. So example six, four over x plus seven y is equal to negative three. I right off the bat, you can see that this x is in the denominator and we could really rewrite this equation as four times x to the negative one plus seven y is equal to negative three, right? One over x is the same thing as x raised to the negative first power. So since x is raised to the negative first power, this automatically makes this equation non-linear. I'm getting a little bored of pink, so I'm gonna change the color to yellow. And we'll do example seven, which is x over three minus y over four is equal to zero. So this is interesting, right? There's fractions here, but none of the variables are in the denominator. All the variables, in this case x and y, are in the numerator in both of these terms. So this is really just saying one third, which is 0 0.3333 continuous, right? Times x minus one over four, which is 0 0.25, times y is equal to zero. So since x and y are not multiplied together or by any other variables, since they're only raised to the first power, since they're not involved within a trigonometric, logarithmic, or exponential function, and they're not a root of anything, then this would make this equation linear, right? So let me scroll down a little bit, and we'll do our last three examples in this lime green color, so eight. Example eight, two sine x minus y is equal to seven. So here are two variables are x and y. They aren't multiplied to each other or with each other. They're only raised to the first power, but our x is part of the sine function, which is a trigonometric function. So because x is involved in a trigonometric function, it's part of that function, this makes this equation non-linear. So let's do nine. Here we have x times y raised to the third power minus y is equal to negative four. So here our variables are x and y. And we have a whole lot of things going on in this equation which makes this equation non-linear. The first is that x and y are multiplied with one another. You can't have product of variables within a linear equation. Secondly, that quantity is raised to the third power. And although this y is only raised to the first power, it's not involved in any trigonometric, logarithmic, or exponential function. It's not part of, it's not a denominator in a term. Um, it's not any of that, it's, it's okay. The fact that x and y are multiplied together in the first term makes this equation nonlinear. And finally, example 10. We've reached our last example. So this one is gonna be a little bit long. Sine of pi times x times e to the negative sine pi over two minus y times tangent of pi, and oh my goodness, this is so long, e sine, e raised to the sine three pi power. So here, our variables are x and y. There's a whole lot of different things going on. There's trigonometric terms such as sine and tangent. We have the constant e, there's pi. So let's look at one term at a time. So this first term before the minus sign, 
we have some sine value, sine of pi, and sine of pi is just a number, and it's multiplied by x, and then that's multiplied by e to the negative sine, this part, e to the negative sine pi over two. e to the negative sine pi over two is also just a number. Don't ask me what number it is, I have no idea, but if you were to calculate sine of pi over two, multiply that by negative one, and then have e raised to that power, that would be just a number. So this is just some number times x times some number. And some number times some number is also some other number, right? So number times x. So in this first term, okay, we just have a coefficient times x. X is not multiplied with any other variable. It's not raised to any other power except one. It's not involved in any trigonometric, logarithmic, or exponential function. It's not in the denominator of this term. And it's not some root of something, right? It's not like square root of X. So this first term is actually linear, right? So the second term, which is this portion right here, well, tangent of pi is just some number, right? So it's some number times y. So it's just gonna be some coefficient times y. And that coefficient goes right there. So again, y is not raised to any other power except one. It's not multiplied with any other variable. You get it, right? And that is equal to, again, sine of three pi is some number and you take e and raise it to that some number, you're gonna get some number. So because you have this and this, and none of them, should I dare repeat myself? Okay, I'll go ahead and do it. X is not, X and Y are both not raised to any power other than one. They're not involved in any trigonometric logarithmic or exponential functions. They're not multiplied together. They're not in the denominator of some term and all that good stuff. So this equation is actually linear. All right, so hopefully these examples have given you a better idea of, of looking at equations and figuring out which ones are linear and which ones are nonlinear.